And the Oscar goes to... Morbius. To all the dreamers out there around the world watching this tonight, I want to say, uh... It's Morbin time. Hello, my movie peeps. What a fantastic year it's been, or at least finally we had a full year of just movie after movie after movie. It wasn't really like that the past two years, but we finally hit some sort of normality this year. And along with that, we hit some highs and lows in the movie release calendar. So what I'm going to be doing here for you guys is giving you my best and worst movie list of 2022. I like to do things differently here. Instead of just giving you one list of the best and worst, I divide it up into several different categories. I'm going to be giving you not only my best movies of 2022, I'm going to tell you my favorite horror movies of 2022, the most disappointing movies of this year, the best comic book movies of this year, and most surprising movies, and even some guilty pleasure movies, just because we got to round things out. I've put timestamps in the description if you want to go ahead and skip around to a list you most want to hear about, and I encourage you as well to give me your own separate list down below of most surprising movies, your favorite comic book movie, what movie disappointed you the most, your worst film of the year. As a reminder, this list list is a reflection of my own personal preference. We all have different experiences in life that makes us like or dislike movies differently. So of course my list is not going to be like yours and there's going to be some movies that you love this year I might not even mention. One, because I didn't like it. Or two, I just didn't happen to see it. But okay, just kicking things off here with honorable mentions. These are the movies I really enjoyed this year but I didn't have an exact placement for them in all these other lists I've made of 2022. Kicking things off here, The Northman. This right here is is the ultimate Viking movie. I'm not even someone who finds an interest in Vikings, but the way this movie blended in mythology with the story it was trying to tell of a son who just wanted revenge for the death of his father, I really dug it. Next up, Knives Out 2, Glass Onion. I still very much prefer that first Knives Out movie, but I had a good time with this second film. It took a very different approach in unraveling its mystery this time around, and I was captivated by it, but at times it did feel like it got lost in its own sauce. Either way, still by the end, I found myself thinking Ryan Johnson continues to be a genius and I want to see more of these Bennett Block mystery solving Knives Out films. Sonic the Hedgehog 2, man, we have come a long way from that first Sonic movie and this second Sonic film did everything the games were and tried to amp them up in movie form. It finally embraced some of those video game ism, introduced us to Knuckles and Tails. We got Jim Carrey going full Robotnik. It's one that makes me really excited to see what the third movie is going to be doing, especially with that post credit scene. Bullet Train was another great action comedy that came out this year. So many unique characters thrown in there. At times, sure, the action can come off ridiculous and Brad Pitt is just plot armor the character. But man, I really dug the brother relationship with Aaron Taylor Johnson and Brian Tyree Henry in here. It maybe would have made it onto one of my best lists if one of the characters I loved most in here didn't end up dying and break my heart. Pearl is another one I really ended up liking this year. Mia Goth is a force to be reckoned with. She is automatically someone I want to see if they're attached to any upcoming horror movies. Her performance was amazing and the way the film was able to tie in some of the pandemicisms with its time era I thought was also really clever. I think I just prefer its predecessor more. Watcher I thought was also a really good horror movie this year. It's about a woman who moves and then she starts to suspect someone across from her is just constantly keeping an eye on her and things unravel from there. The tension and performances are good. I just think it was pretty straightforward. Deadstream I thought was also a pretty fun movie. It takes an interesting approach to found footage horror films. It centers around this in influencer that forces himself to spend the night at a haunted house and well you can imagine what goes on from there but I think this movie kind of shines in taking a better look at some influencers and the things they do behind the scenes to get famous. It's a little bit more comedic than actual horror but I think it's still enjoyable. Hellraiser I also had a really good time with this year as someone who only became a Hellraiser fan this year in preparation of this movie I guess I have the foresight and just relative knowledge that if you put this Hellraiser movie alongside the other dozen Hellraiser films, half of which are just extremely terrible, this was actually a pretty good Hellraiser movie. Steven Spielberg's The Fablemans I thought was also a beautifully done movie. It's sort of a biographical look at his life and how he grew to love movies. I think I would have put this on my list of best if it kind of focused on the movie side a bit, but a lot of the film also deals with this family dynamic and the effects that chasing your passion could have that I thought was interesting, but I guess I just didn't connect to as much. But okay, with some honorable mentions out of the way, let's go on some of these other list I have going on here starting off with most surprising movies of 2022 these are the movies that you saw the trailer for or that you heard were coming up that you're like 
I doubt that's going to be any good. No way that's going to be an enjoyable movie. You watch it, you sit down and go, oh my god, that was actually really good. What the heck? The bottom two here might not make a lot of sense to people, but to me, they were definitely surprises. Starting off number six, Avatar 2 The Way of Water. Maybe it was because I was the semi-Avatar hater going into this movie when the last movie was pretty simple with just very good advanced technology. But I guess that decade long wait for the movie was worth it because even though the story was simple again, I found myself way more intrigued, way more invested into the Avatar world where I'm actually looking forward to the seven, eight sequels they have coming up and that is just a surprise to me. That's why I had to put it on here. Number five on the list, Top Gun Maverick, okay? This is another movie I was surprised with how amazing it was. Maybe there's other people out there that were just not that big of a fans of the first Top Gun, or they did like Top Gun, but they thought a sequel decades later with Tom Cruise and all these other people coming back, okay, and it turns out making a billion dollars i think it's the highest grossing movie of this year that's why it makes it onto the most surprising list just because who knew the success top gun maverick would had sure you might have thought it was an enjoyable movie did you think it was going to be a phenomenal movie? Number four most surprising movie, Chippendale Rescue Rangers, okay? I didn't actually grow up watching the Chippendale cartoon. I saw an episode here and there, but I wasn't the biggest fan of it. And then you sit down and watch the movie, and it's almost a celebration and parody of animated movies in all their forms, whether 2D, 3D, stop motion, or freaking hand puppets. They pulled off a really funny story that I was just dying of laughter. Plus the cameo that was heard around the world, I did not think I was gonna enjoy Chippendale as much as I did. Number three on the list, A Christmas Story Christmas. Now this is the long-awaited sequel to the original A Christmas Story with Ralphie, a traditional Christmas movie that a lot of Americans might watch around this holiday season. It premiered exclusively on HBO Max and wow did it surprise me with its quality. It was an emotional gut punch. It really managed to be another special kind of Christmas movie I could see myself watching in connection to that first movie. Number two on the list, Smile. When you've been watching movies and even reviewing them for as long as I have, you start to point out a sixth sense about movies that might not be great. And Smile to me in the trailers and what it was presenting had all the makings of another generic studio movie with a catchy title, a maybe a catchy premise, a being that kills you from smiling. We've seen that before in Truth or Dare. I fully expected this to be one of the worst horror movies of this year that middle school kids get all crazy about and it turned out really good. It did a lot with its premise. It had some genuinely good jump scares, also some creature work at the end that will haunt your nightmares. I know they did me. I'm actually really hoping they make another one because I would love for them to explore this smile world a little more. Number one most surprising movie of this year for me though had to be Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. No care at all for a solo Puss in Boots movie. I barely wanted the first one. But this brought me back to the old way DreamWorks would do things with just a really great story. Characters that actually had some layers, being able to make fun of the fairy tale world around them. If you would have told me I'd consider this movie on the same level as Shrek 1 and 2, I would have laughed at your face. But I mean it, it really is up there. From there, let's move on to something that's a trend every year, the best comic book movies of this year. And let me tell you, this year, it's a short list. Because I'm not just going to put every comic book movie that's come out this year and just rank them from worst to best. No, I'm only going to put the best ones of this year on this list and two made it on. Starting off with number two, Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Ryan Coogler pulled it off. He was dealt a difficult hand in trying to carry on a movie where your main star was missing. Having then to rework the entire script with a new main character, still introduce Talokan and Namor, give us an epic battle between two nations, pull at our heartstrings, and still try to outdo the Marvel formula. And he did it. Phase four of the MCU has been a rough one, but when I saw Black Panther Wakanda Forever, it was like seeing the silver Silver lining in Marvel again like yeah they can still make amazing movies and this is why I love the MCU but the number one comic book movie of this year no doubt about it play it the Batman. This is what our fourth, fifth iteration of a new Batman and Matt Reeves freaking killed it, man. I don't care what you say. I am obsessed with this Batman. It is my favorite Batman movie out of all of them. Enough time has passed. I've rewatched it over and over where it's not just recency bias. I love this world and I am extremely pumped to see what Robert Pattinson and Matt Reeves do next in here. They got so many things about Batman right that I've wanted to see done on the big screen. I'm hoping it's not just a one hit 
it wonder and the sequels can still match this level of quality. Moving on here to the best horror movies of this year, my favorite genre of all the movie categories, horror films, and man, was 2022 a banger year. So many great horror movies came out this year, I had to limit it at 10, because if not, I could have just continued on. But kicking things off here with number 10, Prey. I know some people get iffy about putting a Predator movie on a horror list, but this is an alien creature that comes down, takes people down one by one in pretty gruesome ways. I consider that to be a horror movie. And what Prey did by going back to basics and showing us a Predator landing on Earth for the first time is exactly what this franchise needed to be kicking again, and it succeeded. So many people ended up loving this movie and gave them a renewed faith in the Predator franchise. It was bloody, action-packed, and characters I enjoyed. I'm really pumped to see where they continue on from here. Number nine on the list, Jordan Peele's Nope. Anytime Jordan Peele has a horror movie coming out that year, you can bet it's gonna end up on this list because the man is a genius. I know there's people that continue to say he's overrated or why do they give him so much praise for just a couple of movies in? This is why. Jordan Peele's Nope might be my least favorite, but it's still one I fully commend with being a really well done piece of art. The subversion of what you expect from an alien movie, the commentary behind it, he just knows how to make a movie that's gonna stick with you and have you thinking about it weeks after you've seen it. I will just say this time around, I felt the commentary overshadowed some of the more horror elements of the film, but that's really my only complaint. Number eight on the list is Scream 5. This is gonna be a huge bias to me because I am such a huge Scream fan. I love this franchise and the nerves I had with a new creative head taking this franchise and then just doing something completely different, brand new characters, brand new story, sidelining the legacy characters that came before. I didn't know if I was gonna end up loving it and well, I ended up really, really liking it. It's a good laying of the groundwork that paid respect to what came before, but also did enough to plant new characters that make me so pumped for the sixth movie. Number seven on my list, The Black Phone. After having watched this movie, this made me go, yep, Scott Derrickson is another one of those directors that if they got a horror movie up and coming, I'm seeing it. He just seems to be really in tune with knowing how to keep an audience on the edge of your seat, being able to pull out a jump scare at the right time where it's not cheap, but instead is still effective while blending in small layers of comedy. Ethan Hawke in here as the grabber was pretty terrifying. I thought the idea of a kid picking up a phone and hearing the voices of dead kids trying to help him escape was gonna come off corny, and maybe while it did slightly, I still found myself totally in tune with the movie and just smile on my face by the end. Number six on the list, Orphan First Kill. This might have been another film you could have added to the surprisingly great category because who would have thought waiting over a decade to make another movie with the same actress from your first film but instead of using CGI or maybe some de-aging technology, you just use good old camera trickery to pretend this 25 year old is an 8 year old. Major props for pulling that off even if it wasn't exactly perfect because what was is the story and being able to pull out another great twist when your first movie already had a great twist. I love the subversion of expectations here. The way they added also some more layers and depth to the backstory of Esther. This is another one of those movies that now that I've seen what they can do, I want 10 more movies with this little orphan girl. Number five on the list, Barbarian. A great horror movie with such a simple premise that I did not think was going to be extended further with social commentary. Some people flinch at that and go, oh, social commentary in a movie? Really? Art reflects life and life reflects art. And if you manage to be able to do that, with a compelling story mixed in with some just effed up imagery. I'm telling you, them nips. We're nipping. And with Barbarian, I just thought it was such a unique way they unfolded the story, how the title kind of tied into the actual creature in here. Because you're like, was that the Barbarian? Or was the man who created her the Barbarian? You see what I mean? Now just think about it. Number four on the list, The Menu. I think whenever it comes down to my horror movie list, as you go up the list, sometimes the movies get more graphic, more gory, more blood. And the menu is not that. It's a horror movie in its sense that, yes, yeah, some characters die in here and terrible things happen to other characters, but it never really glorifies that the way most horror movies do. But instead, it's elevated with its commentary and attack on the wealthy. The effects that has the service worker and people trying to create art only for others to trying to dissect it and ruin all meaning of that art. I was on the edge of my seat for the entirety of its runtime. Performances were great, mainly from Anna Taylor Joy and Ralph Fiennes. Big recommendation for me. Number three on my list, Fresh. This is a movie that went exclusively to Hulu. It stars Sebastian Stan, and I don't really want to say too much more than that. If you've seen the movie, you already know its premise, but man, is it one that kind of gets under your skin and also will keep you on the edge of your seat for its entire runtime. Sebastian Stan in here plays one sadistic man that once you find out what he does for a living, 
oh, you hate this guy. And you really want to see the final girl in here make it out, Daisy Edgar Jones. Plus, I knew this movie was automatically going to make my list when the title of the movie shows up 30 minutes into the film. Like, I love art. Number two, this might surprise some people, bodies, bodies, bodies. I know there's some people that just like hate this movie because it's filled with just awful, terrible characters. But that's kind of the point. Bodies Bodies is what appears to be at first your stereotypical slasher movie, just a bunch of rich a-holes that are stuck in a mansion during a storm while they start dying one by one, and slowly throughout the night you try figuring out who is the person going around killing people. But as bodies start flying and then true colors start coming out from the people you thought were your friends, man does it lead to some amazing dialogue that I was just laughing. All these characters are terrible. You're not going to be able to relate to any of them. If anything, you want most of them to die by the end of the movie. I guess maybe that's why some people just hated this film. They couldn't get past these terrible characters. But I was able to get past that and if you do, you just have one enjoyable great time with an ending twist that I was like, Bravo! And my favorite horror movie of 2022, X. I did not think an A24 movie would be making the top of my 2022 horror movie list, and that's mainly because, like I said, it always comes down to preference, and I'm someone that's not the biggest fan of elevated horror. I don't think there's anything wrong if you're someone that just enjoys the typical slasher gore with just some fun characters, but here with X, they did something that I've always wanted A24 to do, which is blend in elevated horror elements where you have your commentary, you have your symbolism, you have your shots of characters just dancing in slow motion and gore great music in the background, oh my god, it's art! But at the same time, you give me some bloody kills, you give me some disgusting sequences, you have the slasher formula, but you give it, you know, a little bit of wine with your cheese and crackers. And that's what X was for me, a perfect blend of all that, and I just had one of the best times of the year, being so grossed out by what I was witnessing on screen, but still being completely invested in the stories of both the survivors and the person going around doing the killing. But now moving on to our next list here, the most disappointing movies of 2022 these are the movies you thought maybe were gonna be good we're gonna be fun you were really looking forward to counting down the days you sit down in that theater the lights go off curtains are closed and got your popcorn and by the time the credits roll you just want your money back all this time, all this anticipation, why did you do this to me? Starting things off here with number eight on my list, Hocus Pocus 2. Now, this wasn't exactly a movie I was like looking forward to, was super excited, counting down the days, but I did have a level of anticipation for it because everybody loved Hocus Pocus around the Halloween season. It's one of their go-to movies, that first film. And you bring back the Sanderson sisters and you're gonna tell us a story in modern time and I feel like you botched it. I mean, the sisters themselves were the best part of the movie, but all the other story elements around them trying to make these sisters that all they do is eat children sympathetic and heartwarming by the end? What were you doing, Disney? Number seven on my list, Don't Worry Darling. This was a horror movie I was anticipating because of Olivia Wilde. I like what she did with Booksmart, and the cast in here was also looking really good. Florence Pugh, Chris Pine. The trailers were completely ruining all the mystery of this movie, but nonetheless, I thought there was still something to be said here. And while it did have an interesting premise, I thought the way it went about it and unraveled its mystery just kind of left it falling flat. Number six on my list, Disney's Pinocchio. I know, I should never have high hopes for a live action Disney remake, but Pinocchio was one I grew up with, man. That was a movie I actually wanted to see them succeed with. Going straight to Disney Plus, okay, shouldn't worry too much. Robert Zemeckis directing it, all right. The visuals then look good, the trailer recreating some iconic moments. You sit down and watch the movie and it's just, a checklist of recreating moments from that original cartoon, which I know that's why they call it a remake, because you're just remaking what already came before it, but what Disney's missing with these live action remakes is to expand further what's already there. The original movies are all like an hour long. That means you give us an extra 30, 40 minutes to build up some more, give us some more backstory on Geppetto, let us live in some other moments more, not just he needs to go turn into a donkey, needs to go inside a whale, needs to turn into a real boy by the end. Oh, we ran, we ran out of time? Well, let's make him a real boy in the last two seconds so half the audience doesn't see it. Okay. Number five on the list, Morbius, okay? Obviously, I wasn't expecting Morbius to be, like, a great movie. I wasn't thinking it was gonna blow my mind. But it also wasn't even that I was expecting it to be decent. The reason it's on my most disappointed list is because for years, we had that trailer with a Tobey Maguire Spider-Man in the background, bunch of Easter eggs to Oscorp and all these other things. You sit down and watch the movie, 
none of that stuff is in there. They got rid of it, they cut it out, and then they just swindled us to show up in the theater, promising us spider connections just to give us one of the most laughable post-credit end credit scenes that I'm sure is gonna go nowhere. That was just a major disappointment scene in the theater with how they just tricked us to being there. Number four on my list, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I am just a horror fanatic. I love these classic horror icons, and if you're gonna make a new Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, which there hasn't been a good one since the remakes of 2003 and 5, I was at least expecting something decent, and all this Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie had going for it was an awesome leather face and some actually brutal kills. Everything else around that was terrible. The characters they had here, these group of rich kids who buy a town and kick the old people out yeah really makes me love them then you do the rip off halloween 2018 thing of bringing in the legacy character just to be completely useless halfway into the movie and don't even get me started with the way they recreated the ending of the original movie with a self-driving car I don't know if that was brilliant or just dumb. I'd still watch another though. Number three on my list might be a little controversial for some people, Halloween Ends. Look, I have said this time and time again, Halloween Ends is a good Halloween movie as Halloween the season, but as a Michael Myers ending of the chapter movie for the Blumhouse trilogy, it was a disappointment. I enjoyed me a lot those last 10 to 15 minutes where Lori and Michael finally go at it. We get that big epic battle and a conclusion that I thought was satisfying, but the things you do to Michael Myers before that is just having him wrestle to the ground, this little boy steal his mask, having him also have a sidekick that he kills people with side by side, it's just like, what? Michael got to kill like two people in his movie. This was his going out party and you barely gave him anything. Oh my God. But again, it's just like so conflicting because there are things I loved about Halloween ends. Like the Corey Cunningham character, even though he disrespected my boy Michael, I thought he was a cool character. Laurie Strode was also the best she's ever been in any of the other sequels. Like there was some cool elements in there, but it, it just kind of left me disappointed, man. Number two on the list, Thor Love and Thunder. Oh my God, this will forever be the worst Marvel movie to me. I, I know you hate fun, you hate a good time. What's wrong with it? A lot. Taika Waititi, I thought, was a director that should stay in the MCU for a long time, and now I don't want him to direct another movie. Oh, well, he can direct it. Just don't let him write it. I just felt like Thor Love and Thunder, with its story elements it was tackling, could have been so much more. This is a movie that started off with a father having to bury his daughter, then finding out his religion and God are just a scam and he's got to kill him. Then we move on to a main character in here that is dying of cancer. You have Thor who's all by himself, all his family, all his loved ones are gone. He needs to find him and it just turns into a joke fest every minute. There's no levity. There's no room to take in the emotions. It was just one big joke. This movie could have been so much more impactful in that ending that I thought was cute. From then on, they were known as Love and Thunder. That gave me little goosebumps. If that movie was good, I would have been sobbing by the end. But number one on the list for most disappointing movie of 2022, it has to be Jurassic World Dominion. Oh my God, this was the end game of the Jurassic Park franchise, bringing in the two different trilogies all into one, from the original Jurassic Park characters to the Jurassic World characters all coming into one. And that definitely was the best part of this movie, seeing them interact, having them talk to each other, everything else it turned into a stereotypical Jurassic Park film that should not have been that. This was a movie where you were building up to dinosaurs being everywhere. Everybody was expecting you to show us the everyday life of what it's like walking out your front door, seeing a couple of velociraptors, seeing a couple of T-Rexes. What does that look like? Instead, you take us to an island where there's already dinosaurs and you show us another movie with an island of dinosaurs. Why would you do that when the rest of the world is dinosaurs? Source. And don't even get me started on the main subplot of bugs. Giant mutated bugs. That was your big finale? <laughs> Why'd you do that? Oh, okay. But, uh, just to show you I'm not a stickler for bad movies or movies that aren't that great, let's move on to Guilty Pleasures of 2022. These are the movies you can look at yourself in the mirror, you can say, these aren't great films, these aren't good, most people hate them, but 
for some reason I liked them. I thought they were fun. Number six on my list, Lightyear, okay? I really liked Lightyear. I thought it was good. It did not take the direction I was expecting. I will admit that. I wanted to see almost like these cops in space kind of movies. Space Rangers everywhere, doing missions here and there. And then Buzz gets caught up in his own thing, meets Zerg, and has a big blast. It didn't really turn out to be that at all. It turned out to be a deeper film about losing out on time and not realizing what you have right in front of you and always focusing on something that might not be achievable. You also had the twist with Zerg in here that not everyone liked. I thought it was okay. It was trying to subvert expectations. I had a good time with it. It's also sad because since this one underperformed and not a lot of people went to see it, this was the only Pixar movie that had a post credit scene teasing a sequel and I don't think it's gonna get it. Number five on the list, Violent Night. David Harbour as a Santa Claus who goes around killing mercenaries trying to save a family on Christmas. Come on now. I need more dumb fun action movies like this to come back. Number four on the list, Terrifier 2. Look, I get it. Terrifier 2 is the ultimate slasher movie. Coming in at three hours long, Art the Clown is not to be messed with. He does things to the human body that just make me want to hurl and clap at the same time. He has cemented himself for sure as a new icon. I'm excited to see what he does next, but I will agree this movie is not for everybody. It is still an acquired taste. Not everyone is gonna be fully on board with what happens throughout this film. And it was a little frustrating with so many things this movie was building up with its three hour runtime that it didn't get to conclude on and is just setting up for another movie. Number three on the list, DC League of Super Pets, okay? This is a DC film that has the Justice League getting together, interacting, and their pets. It's gonna be the only time I'm gonna get to see that for a long time with whatever James Gunn is currently doing with the DC Universe. But here, it actually had a lot of fun within its world. Keanu Reeves' Batman had me laughing with every single line that came out of his mouth. And there was even an emotional backstory with Kevin Hart's character I wasn't expecting. And maybe that's just because I'm a pet lover, but this was genuinely a good, fun movie. Number two on the list, Black Adam. It sucks now knowing we're not gonna get another movie. Dwayne Johnson has already left the character and he says he might come back one day in the multiverse, but I highly doubt it. At least we still You'll get this junk food of a comic book movie with just cheesy dialogue with some cool action visuals that I think do look pretty awesome with the introduction of other superheroes we might not have seen for a long time. Adam Smasher, Hawkman, Cyclone, Dr. Fate. It's really the comic book movie that took things from other comic book films that have come out in the last decade and just kind of mashed them into one. I had fun with it and that's always what it'll be. It's just a fun dumb movie. But number one, a movie I can't believe I had a put on here but I see so many people hating it the Gray Man. This is the Chris Evans and Ryan Gosling movie. I actually went to go pay money to see this at the theater, guys. I could have sat down and watched it at Netflix, but I saw my theater was playing it, and I went to go watch it, and I had a great time. The Russo brothers might not be doing the best job making movies outside of the MCU, but I thought The Gray Man was a great version of like a movie that has an 80s premise with today's modern effects and capabilities. Ryan Gosling and Chris Evans to me were electric on screen. These two hitmen going after each other, the action I also thought was over the top and fun. CGI could have used some work, but this gave me the vibes of like a movie you'd watch with your dad, you know? Those action films you just sit down and have a good time with, and that's what this was to me. A really good, fun action movie. I can't believe a lot of people don't like it. But now bringing me to the best movies of 2022, taking everything from every genre, trying to compile it into one list of just the movies that really hit me this year. Starting off here with number 10 on the list, Chippendale Rescue Rangers. We just don't get parody movies that do it like Chip and Dale. They're making fun of animated films, being a parody on them without reverting to just pop culture, lowbrow jokes. There's actual cleverness involved here and a cameo I'm just always gonna love. Number nine on the list, Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Like I said, it is a great horror movie. Just so much fun. Terrible characters, sure, but the way I was on the edge of my seat trying to figure out who the killer was while still just bursting into laughter every other second, Oh, I'm gonna watch this movie so many times. Number eight on the list, Black Panther Wakanda Forever. I mentioned Ryan Coogler had an impossible task with this movie, trying to tell us a story we care about without your star there, and he did that plus so much more. Number seven on the list, X. Just being that perfect blend of an elevated horror kind of movie with also vibes of a traditional horror. A slasher with characters that are dying one by one, but just a backstory behind that that means so much more, especially when you watch Pearl. I liked Pearl, but I I thought X just kind of captured my attention a little more. Number six on the list, Avatar The Way of Water. The way James Cameron managed to also again be another visual spectacle that literally had me about 10 to 20 different times throughout the movie going, 
oh my god this looks amazing and making me actually invested in the stories that he's building up here with the kid cast the expanding of pandora and its world my god he did some things in here that make me so excited to see where this universe goes in the coming sequels number five on my list pinocchio but not disney's pinocchio guillermo del toro's pinocchio i need more animated movies like this and i don't even mean the stop motion kind i mean the kind that aren't afraid to be more adultish to have some really dark messages in here i am watching this pinocchio movie going is this movie for kids because i was just floored by the amount of dark things that happen in here but also for the better guillermo del toro takes a really unique approach to the pinocchio story and does so many wonderful things with it it was also an emotional ride that really punches you in the gut in those last two to three minutes i could not hold back those tears number four on the list puss in boots what more can i say i've been raving about puss in boots all week this movie so surprising with its amazing quality it's a attention to detail within the shrek world and fairy tale creatures it made me relive my love of the shrek universe and just gets me so pumped to see if shrek 5 will have the same quality as this movie number three top gun maverick i never ever in a million years thought Top Gun Maverick would be one of my favorite movies of this year just because I had no nostalgia no attachment to that original movie I think it's just fine but the way Top Gun Maverick will just give you almost an anxiety attack in the theater watching it on the big screen with these action sequences they do in the air wow we live in a world where comic book movies are the action movies to go to with just overuse of cgi and explosions that top gun maverick sometimes reminds you the things we live in now that actually exist and are possible can be just as exciting and thrilling number two on my list everything everywhere all at once you're gonna see so many people talk about this movie and this film to me is so hard to put in words to express how much it means to me all i can say is go watch it and experience it for yourself it has everything in it from laughter emotions action to just the most random wildest things you will ever see in a movie but it all just somehow makes sense at the end and really just speaks to you i saw this movie and wanted to do a review but i kind of just sat at my desk thinking about it pondering it pulling out all the different emotions i came with it and i just I thought I can't review it. I can't put it into words. I'm just going to let me live with this movie and my inner thoughts. But it did end up on my best list. So I have to talk about it somehow. Number one at the end day though. I'm a kid at heart. I love what I love. And the Batman being the best Batman movie I have ever seen was everything I could have asked for. Through the many different adaptations of Batman, there have been some really cool ones, but this to me just seemed like the one that was literally what I always imagined Batman to be, and I was witnessing it all on screen. The crafting of the world Matt Reeves did with introducing other characters living within it from Catwoman, the Penguin, Carmen Falcone, the Riddler, it really also brought back the nostalgia of the Batman animated series, the great score, the great costume designs, cinematography, choreography, all of it just I did not want to leave that world once the movie ended that speech Batman gives by the end of the movie I have replayed and watched that so many times along with the scene at the beginning of the movie where he's narrating it's the movie where you just walk out of that film going, I wish someone would try me right now because I want to punch him. <laughs> but again, guys, just remember, those are my personal preferences. These lists are just a reflection of what I like, what I hold dear to me. They're not going to be the same as yours. You're going to disagree with me, but let's agree with one final list here. A brand new list that only comes out this year I call Throw It in the Fire and Feed It to Morbius, Jeepers Creepers 4. Leave me your list down below.